Hi, this is Steve from Moyer Marine. Today we will be reviewing a recently completed project from our shop, the removal of the cylinder head from this late model Atomic 4. The largest challenge when removing the cylinder head is trying not to break off the head studs. Since your Atomic 4 has probably been in service for multiple decades, there is a good chance that a few studs may break off as you try to remove them. Even if your engine looks good on the outside and appears to be rust free, small amounts of water may have seeped up the studs from the water jacket over the years, causing corrosion in the space between the head and the stud, basically seizing the studs in place. One of our goals during this video is to show you a method of drilling out these broken studs if and when they occur. In preparing this video, We've made the assumption that the head is being removed in conjunction with a major overhaul or valve job, meaning that the studs will have to be removed and replaced. We've also used a somewhat worst case engine, so we can cover as many challenges as possible. If you're working on a freshwater cooled engine and the head is eager to come off, please feel free to take shortcuts as you would feel appropriate. So let's get started. Step one is to remove the head nuts. I'm using a half inch ratchet with an 11 16th inch socket. You may find a 3 8 inch ratchet or box end wrench will work on the nuts. But as we continue on with the stud removal, you will need more leverage and they will probably not be large enough. We find that a half inch ratchet at least or even a half inch breaker bar may be required for stubborn studs. Once all the nuts have been removed, take a close look at the space between the stud and the head. Use a wire brush to remove any debris at the top of the head so you can see where the head meets the stud. If you see air space with little or no visible rust, that's a good sign. Next we will need to beg your patience. If you rush forward and attempt to start turning the studs out too early, there's a good chance a few may come out. However, there's an equally good chance that you will break at least as many. This will lead to hours of additional work. Instead, we suggest using what we call the tap-tap method. This method uses penetrating oil combined with sideways tapping of the stud to help the oil soak down. Hopefully the penetrating oil will work its way down between the head and the stud and loosen up the corrosion that is built up there. We're using PB Blaster penetrating oil, but any good penetrating oil will work. Just make sure it's thin enough to work its way down the stud. You start by spraying the oil at the top of the head and then start tapping. Tap from all directions as you continue spraying. What we hope to see up here are small bubbles as the oil percolates down the stud, like you see here. While it's true this will take some time, it's much easier than drilling out broken studs. Keep adding oil and keep tapping. The longer the oil has to work, the better. For the purposes of this video, I applied oil four or five times, with at least one to two hours between for soaking. If your Atomic 4 is more rusty, a good overnight soak is not out of the question. If you come to a stud like this one that shows very little or no visible airspace between the stud and the head and the oil does not penetrate, you may need to accept the fact this stud may very likely break off. As you can see, even with continued tapping and soaking, very little oil is soaking down. With all our head studs soaked in penetrating oil, it's time to start pulling. You mount the stud puller by putting its opening over the stud, then turning the center nut counterclockwise as you hold the outer housing. Once it's snug, put a large wrench on the housing. We're using a large adjustable wrench. On the top nut, use a 15 16 socket or wrench. Turn the top wrench counterclockwise while holding the lower wrench until it's tight. Try to start loosening the stud. 
The stud puller is self-tightening. In other words, as you turn it counterclockwise, it actually bites harder into the stud, making itself tighter. You're applying a fair amount of leverage to the stud, so if your engine is simply sitting on a workbench, you'll have to find some way to brace it so it won't move as you loosen. To loosen the puller's grip on the stud, turn the center nut and housing in the opposite directions as when you started. You can then turn the last few threads out by hand and lift the puller and stud out together. To fully release the stud, keep turning the two halves by hand until the jaws open and the stud is released. And that's the basic technique. Just continue on with the rest of the studs. As you can see, the studs that we're removing are in very poor condition. Not to mention, using the stud puller will ruin the top threads. For this reason, we always recommend replacing old studs with brand new studs. If you feel some extra resistance after a stud has become loose, stop turning. Try turning the stud back in the tightening direction after applying some penetrating oil. This will help the oil soak in more effectively. Repeat this back and forth motion until you feel the stud really becomes loose. Never force a stud until you've at least tried this method. After this, if the stud is going to break, it's going to break. You at least tried everything you could do. On this last stud, the one we suspected might break, I couldn't apply the necessary torque with the half-inch drive, 
so I switched to a half inch breaker bar. And in this case, the stud broke off. This is a fairly typical break and what we hope for if a stud has to break. That is to say, the stud breaks cleanly at the top of the head. Next, we'll have to drill this broken stud out. The first step in drilling out a broken stud is to grind the top of the stud as flat as possible. We're going to be using a handheld electric grinder, but you could use a file. It would just take longer. Keep grinding until the top of the stud is flat. If you scuff the top of the head, it's not a problem. Now that the stud is flat, take a small centering punch and punch the center of the stud. Take your time. The closer to dead center you can get, the better. Start drilling with an eighth inch bit. If possible, always use new drill bits. And drill down about an inch and a quarter. Put some tape on your drill to mark this depth or use a depth stop if you have one. Drilling to this depth will leave just enough stud behind above the level of the block, allowing you to wrench it out. Apply oil as you drill to prevent your bits from binding and breaking. Drill slowly, remembering not to apply too much pressure to the drill. Next, move up to a 3 16 bit. Then a quarter inch. and finally a 3 8 inch bit. By this time the studs should be totally gone or if you are slightly off center there will be a thin skin or a sidewall left behind. This is totally normal and won't keep the head from being pulled off. With all the studs now removed it's time to lift off the head. Take a medium to large screwdriver and insert it into the indentations between the head and the block and try to pry up and down. You can see we had just a little bit of movement and that's great. Next, gently hammer the screwdriver in and continue trying to pry up and down. Repeat the same thing on the other sides as needed until the head breaks free. At this point, the only thing holding the head on is the small amount of stud left behind after our drilling. And there it is. A nice looking late model cylinder head removed without any damage. With our broken stud exposed, we can take a monkey wrench and grip the small amount that's left and turn it out. Keep turning, being careful not to bang the exposed valves with your wrench. And there it is, what's left of our broken stud. You can see the skin or the sidewall I mentioned earlier. At this point, this Atomic 4 is ready to move on to the next steps in the rebuilding process. Thank you for your time. This concludes our demonstration. We hope it's been a help to you. You can find parts, support, and any specialty tools mentioned in this video at moyermarine.com.